This is another example of a Octavian small formation. Uh, this is a patient who had pre previously embolized. That's the onyx you can see on the original study. Uh, she'd had a malformation and thinning of the skin and, and near skin breakdown in her uh, anterior shin. We'd previously embolized that, excised it, put a skin graft on it. She it came back with pain a little more distal in the medial side of her uh, calf. Right in the distribution we see there's all uh, tearing and small formations. Again, if you're the perforate, trying to navigate a little catheter down there. So not really that big a deal. We'll just go ahead and, and, and put in the onyx. Uh, you, as you can see, there's two different formulations of onyx, uh, the 18 and the 34. Uh, onyx 18 travels further before it, um, it converts, basically, and, and solidifies. So in very high flow situations, you really want to use something that will polymerize relatively rapidly. But here, that's not the case, and so uh, we're uh, using um, uh, onyx uh, 18 because uh, it's kind of low risk. It'll travel a little bit further. Again, we've done an angiogram. Uh, we've essentially uh, overlaid this. We can, uh, and so we speeded this up a little bit. We're going about uh, times two, uh, and really what we're going to have to do is cannulate each of these feeding vessels, like two or three different areas underneath the skin. And so we've got a diagnostic catheter, five French catheter, basically in the uh, main artery. In this case, it's the um, posterior tibial artery, and then we have selective we've got micro catheters going. Uh, into the uh, more selective branches. Again, once you get dye in the soft tissue, it makes it a little bit more difficult to see onyx is going. So again, the keys to this are make sure the catheter is adequately uh, stable. So ideally you want the diagnostic catheter right in one of those trunks coming off the posterior tibial, and then you go very selective with the uh, microcatheter. And here, um, occasionally you use coils, but we're not using coils here. We, they're too small, really to make a difference. So we're just basically using the onyx. Uh, again, that, so you can test screen is the old onyx. As you've got dye in the background, just makes it a little more challenging to see what is actually going on with the onyx. <clears throat> so best to avoid that. Uh, you can see at the top end of the screen is the old onyx. That's kind of what it looks like. It just looks like this black cast of the blood vessels, which is uh, one of the sort of reasons this stuff is really, really nice to work with. Pretty safe, tends to push distally. If you find basically that it's starting to back up, then just stop, wait, let it polymerize, and then you know, push again. Uh, and uh, if you also find it's kind of refluxing back towards the uh, axial vessels, you can actually pull, you can actually aspirate on the syringe. The syringe that will pull a uh, negative one. It will actually uh, control uh, the onyx and, and get it away from uh, areas where you, where you might get in trouble. So there you can see the onyx in the form of this, the cast of the vessel. And now it's time to actually go look at some of these other vessels that catheterize them. You kind of want to get that microcatheter as far out distal into the malformation as you can. And then you start doing the injection and just gradually uh, pull it back. So indications around intervention, like if the patient had this and didn't have any symptoms related, it probably wouldn't do anything. And really massive high flow malformation, that may be necessary. But we see a lot of malformation that we really, history is uh, indicative of what's going to happen in the future. Many of them are stable. Of course, there are situations where trauma um, or pregnancy or going on oral contraceptives have been reported that actually increase the, um, the, the, the growth of these malformations. Here again, uh, we're, we're, this one's almost got a little aneurysm in it, and it actually made it fairly difficult to get the microcatheter and distal because it really just kept uh, wrapping around inside the aneurysm. Uh, the, uh, what we tend to use is these pro-grade uh, microcatheters from Terumo. They come in a variety of different shapes, which can be very useful. I think in the situation is just because you almost have to get in the aneurysm, rotate the microcatheter, and um, try and catheterize that branch that's down there. Okay, so we put some onyx in. Which is, they just want to confirm where you are all the time. And again, what I'm looking at is where does the catheter exit from the feeding uh, axial vessels. That's what you want to keep an eye on and make sure that onyx is not backing up and going into that. And since their pain is really right in the sub Q, obviously you, you want to make sure you get these areas. One of the reasons malformations sometimes become symptomatic, particularly venous malformations, is they actually form thrombus in it. Um, most of the time that's self-resolving, but eh, occasionally it's not. And this, of course, is by definition of tear venous malformation here. We're accessing it from the arterial side. So starting to inject the onyx. 
which you see is these dark spots just kind of start to grow. And this one's again a lot close to the uh, posterior tibial artery. So you're either going to have to stop, try to reposition the microcatheter, let this solidify, fill up that little aneurysm, and then try to pass the, the catheter using that to kind of buttress it and to uh, get the catheter a little more dislant. As I mentioned, I always tell patients, good things happen slowly when you're treating these, a little bit of time, a little bit of time. Bad things happen fast. So uh, it's always hard to know when to end. I end when I feel it's gonna, the next injection is going to start to get unsafe. And it's just like coils. It's always the last injection, the one you've, got, you've done most of it. You're just trying to, quote, top it off because uh, that's when you're getting back towards the axial circulation. And that's when either coil launches. It's a big deal. I'll show you a digital extraction angiogram and see how it's looking. So, you know, we, we managed to uh, take out those that are feeding into the, the area of the skin. So I, what I did beforehand was ask her, where is it hurting? And, you know, and try and make sure that that's the area we specifically target. But thank you again for uh, watching this example of a multi-component uh, arteriovenous malformation. She did very well post-procedure.